Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working Monday to Friday primarily in the financial services sector. Five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to take a look at CloudFormation in this beginner's guide series. It's a fundamental service in AWS and it comes up pretty much in every certification exam. So hopefully this content will help you kind of prep towards it and just give you a better understanding of what CloudFormation is. So what is CloudFormation? CloudFormation is infrastructure as code. But what's infrastructure as code? So traditionally on-premise, we have hardware. We'd have to go out and buy servers and there are physical racks that sit inside our data center. Cloud, we don't do this. We don't provision or buy hardware. There's no, we don't actually physically own a server, which means instead our infrastructure is provisioned via code. So if we say we want an EC2 instance, we can go into the console and we can click a few buttons and we end up with an EC2 instance. That's how you provision infrastructure with code, albeit via the console. The console is an abstraction away from the code itself. But CloudFormation brings that code to us as an end user. So CloudFormation have a template and inside a template we can define resources such as EC2. And inside that template we can say, hey, spin me up this EC2 instance inside this region at this size now, please. And then we have infrastructure as code. And this begins the entire DevOps process. So we've all heard of that buzzword DevOps, which is development and operation. And infrastructure as code via CloudFormation lets us do a DevOps pipeline for continuous integration. So there's a lot of buzzwords there, but essentially if we think of it this way, we need a server or a compute or a glue job or an API, and we wanna write that through code and provision it through code rather than going into the console, we use CloudFormation. And CloudFormation is quite powerful. So it doesn't have to be a single resource. We can have a template and a template can define multiple resources. Templates can then roll into stacks where we can provision through stacks and we can use this to provision, update or delete resources in AWS. This can be across accounts, across regions or within a single account and region. So it really is a powerful tool to manage our entire AWS ecosystem through code. But why use CloudFormation? So there's lots of different tools for managing infrastructure as code. One of the big ones right now is the HashiCorp product Terraform, and that's another valid option. But CloudFormation is the native AWS tool. So by adopting CloudFormation or getting familiar with CloudFormation, you're ingrained in that AWS environment. So you might lose a bit of multi-skill across clouds, but it means you really have an in-depth knowledge of AWS. And if you learn CloudFormation, it's not that hard a leap into something else. It's also based on JSON or YAML and not its own declarative language like other third parties. So it's a lower barrier to entry. So if you've worked with JSON before and we're in the cloud environment, so you've probably encountered it in like an IAM policy at the very least. So if you've used JSON before, then the step in the cloud formation isn't that large. So there's a lower barrier to entry to get going, which means anyone can really pick it up. And that's what I hope to do by the end of this video today. But when do we use cloud formation? That's an excellent question. So best practice would say that we should probably always create our resources through code. But that's not always the most efficient way in development or while learning. We just want to get in and go on the console and click buttons. But I have a rule. All my production system must run through code. And this is for two reasons. One, it lets me have a CI CD pipeline where I just want to change one bit of the resource. I don't have to go in and deprovision through the console and then reprovision. I can do this through a pipeline, build in testing, and then do some deployments that kind of work on integration and continuous deployment schedule. And then the second point is disaster recovery. So if for some reason I clicked a button or something happened in AWS and I lost all my infrastructure, all I have to do is go into CloudFormation, click a button, and everything spins back up. I don't have to go through endless hours of spinning things up in the console and reconfiguring it. That's the real benefits of CloudFormation is that CICD pipeline and the disaster recovery, plus it's low barrier to entry and it's native integration with AWS. Why don't you join me in the console and we'll go spin up a resource using CloudFormation. We'll take a look at CloudFormation itself. We'll do it in the JSON language. We'll form a stack and we'll get a resource up and running. Join me there. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS console. Now for today's lesson, we're going to need a few resources. I have put those on GitHub. So there's a link in the description below where you can go to my GitHub page and find them. These include a template that we're going to use for CloudFormation so we don't have to code it from scratch. 
a lambda function that we're going to create through the template and a zipped version of that lambda function that the template actually needs to read in. So those three things are what we require. So if you just download them as a zip file and store them for later, that's all we need to do right now. Back on the console, to get us underway, we need an S3 location to put those resources. So I'm going to create an S3 bucket from scratch. If you have a bucket that you wish to use already, then just skip this part of the demo and carry on when we get on the cloud formation. If not, follow through with me and we'll create an S3 bucket. So clicking on the S3, or you can search at the top by going S3 and selecting, we need to create a new bucket. As always, it's at the right hand side. And I'm just going to call this something that I know to delete later. So uh, Donny Chivers hyphen CF delete. And don't forget, your S3 bucket has to be globally unique within the entirety of AWS. So I like to use my name because I like to think that no one else is using my name. I'm just going to leave everything else as default and create bucket. And the bucket has been created. Once in the S3 bucket, we need to add a couple of the files. So we click add files, we go into the unzipped version of the folder we just downloaded and we only need the JSON file and that zip file. Not the zip file we downloaded, but the zip file of the Lambda. We open and we should have two items. So it's the .json file and the zip file of the Lambda. And we say, that's okay, let's upload those files. A few seconds later, the files are uploaded. Just double check, go back to the bucket location and you can see the two files are there. We now need to go to CloudFormation, and once there, we'll create a template using this JSON file. Over to CloudFormation. That's me landed on the CloudFormation page. If you haven't used CloudFormation before, you'll be greeted with this page where you can create stack here. If not, left hand side in stacks. But before we begin, I'm going to create a role that lets CloudFormation build resources on our behalf. Because once you're in the template structure of CloudFormation, it's harder to create a role. So up in the top, I'm just going to go to IAM. I'm going to open that in a new tab along the top. I am resources. I'm going to create a role. I'm going to hit then create role. And we're looking for cloud formation, a lot of cloud services. There it is. Next, we're going to attach permissions. And as always in my bad practice, I'm going to give this administrator access. No tags. And then I need to give it a name. So let's just call this one delete role 101 CF Jari. And call it whatever you want. Create the role. Let's just remember the name of it. Delete role. And that is up and running and ready to go. Exit out of that page. Back on the cloud formation. Okay. That's me on the stack. Now, before we go any further, we're just going to take a quick look at the template that we downloaded and then re-uploaded the S3. So, it has a couple of things that are important. It asks us to provide an S3 bucket, which is the location I created at the start of the video. And a key, which is going to be the .zip file where our Python code is located. Again, we've uploaded that already. Next thing it does is create a basic execution rule for that Lambda. Again, I have laid everything out it's going to need. Then it's going to create a policy for that Lambda and attach it to the execution rule. Once it's done that, it's then going to create the AWS Lambda function using the execution rule above and the Lambda policy. It then needs the S3 bucket and the S3 key, which we've detailed at the top, takes that location and creates our Lambda function. We're going to step through this process now in the console. So back on the cloud formation, first thing it asks is the S3 URL of where our template lives. Our template is the .json file. So if we click into it, back on S3, I should add, it's the object URL you require, not the URI. So really important URL. You can click this little copy button here. Back on to the CloudFormation page. We type that in and we hit next. Then it asks us for the two parameters. So our parameter is back up here. We need the bucket name, which is right here at the top. I'm just going to copy and paste that in and be very lazy. And then the second thing it needs is the dot zip name is my key. Your key file or your key, your S3 key and your S3 bucket may actually differ um, compared to mine. The next thing it needs is a stack name. So I'm just going to call this Johnny Shivers Lambda. Lambda. And we're going to go next. It then needs an IAM rule to run. So we created that one at the very start of the video. You may already have another one, but I created one. Just follow along. Then we click next, and this is all information about where our stack's going to be. 
You can see key thing here is that my bucket is this name and the actual S3 key of that Python code is there. Then we click acknowledge, really important, and create stack. Okay, we're off and creating the stack. What we should see in a couple of minutes time is create complete in green appear here by hitting this refresh button. In the meantime, you can hit this little refresh button up on the right hand side and you'll see these statuses change as we go through. So I'm going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up again once it's complete. Okay, that took about 30 seconds in total and you can see if you just click on this re refresh button here, you'll end up with create complete. Now let's go check out our Lambda function. So if I go to Lambda and I open that link, I have one Lambda function, there it is. And you can see that my Lambda function has been created. It just prints out a little hello world. So if you go to test events, type in test, accept everything that's there and then hit test. You can see this Lambda was successfully called. Excellent, with a little print hello world right there. Last thing to show you is back on cloud formation. You can actually roll back a stack or delete. So there's the delete button. You just hit delete, delete stack, and it will start at delete. This will take a few minutes and it will roll back all the resources that we've just created. So you'll have a blank slate again. So that's everything for today. I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.